How much power do you actually need to run your headphones? This is something which a lot of people aren't that certain about, and there's a lot of myths that get talked about online as well, which can lead people down the wrong path. So here's a few quick points to clear up how much juice you actually need to make your headphones sing. Firstly, to work out how much voltage, current, and power you actually need to get your headphones to a particular level, you can use a headphone power calculator like the one on headphones.com. Plug in the impedance of your headphones, the sensitivity, and a target output level, and it'll tell you exactly what you need. But wait, if you listen at, say, 85 decibels, you don't actually want to put 85 decibels into the calculator, because the volume level that you are perceiving and what the headphone is actually pushing out at all frequencies are not necessarily the same thing. Our perceived volume level most mostly comes from content around 2 to 4 kilohertz, and this is also where the A weighting curve, which is what's used by most SPL meters and even what the OSHA volume safety guidelines uses, comes from. But if you take a quick look at the level versus frequency of almost any song, you'll see that bass content can be 20 to maybe even 30 decibels louder than the stuff at higher frequencies. So with a headphone power calculator, if you listen at say 85 dB A weighted, you don't just want to put 85 dB into the calculator since that only tells you what you need to get the headphone loud, but not what you need to avoid the bass content which is higher in amplitude from clipping. Instead, you want to add an extra 20, maybe even 25, or if you use a lot of bass EQ or listen to really bassy music, maybe even 30 dB of extra headroom. So if you use the calculator and get a needed figure of say 3 watts, a 6 watt headphone amplifier is guaranteed to be great, right? Well, not necessarily. You see, the maximum power spec of an amplifier only tells you at what point that amplifier is either going to be distorting massively or maybe will even just shut off to protect itself. It doesn't actually tell you how well it's going to be handling high power outputs up to that point, and there can be many lower power amplifiers like a 3 watt max amplifier that could be handling 1 or 2 watts output much better than some 6 watts max amplifiers could. So instead of just looking at the maximum power spec for an amplifier, what you actually want to do is check the measurements and look at the distortion versus output level graph. This tells you how that amplifier is going to be behaving with higher output levels up to its maximum. And so with this information, you can check not just what the absolute maximum the amp can output without dying is, but also whether it will actually be able to cleanly deliver the amount of power that you do need. Don't just trust the max power spec itself, and in fact, don't trust the volume knob either. Just because you've got plenty of room left to go on the volume knob, it does not mean the amp itself has more headroom. The volume knob only controls how much the amplifier is attenuating the incoming signal, but it doesn't know what the original level of the signal was or what the maximum output of that amplifier is. And there are plenty of amplifiers where if you turn it up past one or two o'clock on the volume knob, it will start clipping or just outright shut off to protect itself. I can open my mouth wider, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I can scream louder if my amplifier or my lungs are the limiting factor.